Well, hi, hello, and a warm welcome to Art Biz TV. My name's Sophie Mahir, and my guest today is the super talented Jyoti McKee. Now, Jyoti has worked for many years as a spiritual and shamanic teacher. She's an experienced clairvoyant and channel, as well as being an author and professional artist. Bringing her authentic presence and psychic awareness to her work, she has facilitated courses, sessions and lectures internationally. Combining her clairvoyant and shamanic abilities with a loving and meditative presence, she enables you to create the harmony that can exist between mind, body, soul and emotions. This experience has been described as communicating directly with your soul. Jyoti has shared with us some amazing steps on her journey from, from the UK through to Perth and also some incredible top tips if you're just starting out and you're not sure how to pull all your unique threads together and make one creative niche. So without further ado, let's dive into this interview. Right. Well, hello and a really warm welcome to Jyoti to this exciting interview that we've entitled Create Your Own Perfect Artist Niche. So welcome to this interview, JT. Oh, thank you, Sophie. It's lovely to be here. It's exciting. We've had a little bit of a preamble before doing this, and we've got some really exciting topics to discuss. So let's go and dive straight in with this first question that I wanted to ask you. So you have a totally unique set of skills and experience. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came to be? Yeah, um, well, it started uh, in childhood. I, um, I, I mean, and this is looking back later, I had psychic experiences. I could see, you know, like the ghost of my grandmother and things that I realized other people couldn't see. Mm. Uh, and uh, so what I did with that was I always loved drawing. So I draw what I saw um, and, and that sort of helped kind of keep me feeling, oh, this is OK. It's quite stable. I spoke to my mum once about it she said please don't tell anybody keep quiet mm. you no know, this is this is back a long while ago and um, yeah and you know people could be a bit funny so I did and instead drew um, what I saw and uh, so that was lovely you know it just sort of kept going and then when by the time I reached my 20s because I still kept quiet about it even though I was having some quite strong experiences sometimes wow when I was at Cambridge you know and because all those old buildings, oh God, anyway. <laughs> so by my late 20s, um, uh, with my boyfriend, we went to stay the night with a couple of ladies who, uh, and this is like the 1970s, yep. uh, early 1970s, uh, where one was a kinesiologist back then and one was a something else. I think they were with um, the theosophy people. I only just let them met them. I thought they were wonderful. Stayed the yeah, night. Absolutely. And they had, oh, that night they had five dogs all running around, wild as anything. And one fat cat who sat by the fire. So in the morning, I woke up a bit late and I thought, oh, God, better get down for breakfast. And I'm going down the stairs from my room when on the on this uh, windowsill was this big fluffy white cat. And I thought, oh, great, they've got another cat, you know. So I dash in the kitchen and say, I'm sorry I'm late for breakfast. And they said, that's all right. And I said, oh, I love your other cat. And she kept on stirring the porridge or whatever she was doing. And she said... What other cat? And I said, really, you know, your big, white, fluffy one. She said, oh, that's great, my dear. That cat died about 10 years ago. <laughs> you're here, you know. So I, I was a bit shocked and, and sat down with her and she said, you've got to use this. You know, yeah. this is a skill, this is a gift. And I thought, oh, OK. So, yeah, I combined that and it, it made perfect sense. And it was a way of keeping, you know, balanced. And, and a lot of artists have this, don't we? That we are sort of outside usual way people operate with yeah. uh, the onlooker so it was it was that's, part that's that. incredible what a great story what a great story <laughs> now you mentioned Cambridge and of course obviously as a fellow Brit I'm like yeah I can visualize walking down the streets in Cambridge so other people might be thinking well where's where's Cambridge <laughs> so tell us a bit about your background and you know what brought you to where you are today I guess including that journey through Cambridge <laughs> okay well I went to this lovely college at Cambridge I had to struggle to get there because I come from working class background in Nottingham, uh, which is in the Midlands in England. And yep. it probably doesn't. It's so we're going to go when UK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, of course, mostly back then, we went to work in a factory or a shop. 
And I didn't want to do that. Um, so so I, I got myself a further education against my parents' wishes. Um, not their fault, they didn't realise. And then I applied to this college in Cambridge, mainly because I had a boyfriend who was applying for Cambridge. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> anyway, so, to go with the so flow. I applied, this, I applied to this beautiful college called Homerton. I went for the interview and met this wonderful uh, Dr. Helen Morris, her name was. She was the head of the literature department. And she said, oh, we must have you. You know, I was spouting poetry to just because I love reading, you know, I've yeah. read my life. And I showed her my art. She said, oh, yes, yes, you've got a great art department. So I, I went to Homerton College and there, of course, uh, you know, pursued both, uh, plus theatre, because Cambridge has got quite a, a good theatre um, yeah. society. So I was in some plays, designed the costumes and the makeup. I had a, I had a ball. <laughs> wow. So you were straight into a little bit of everything right in those early days. Yeah. 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 So, so that's how that began. And then uh, because my boyfriend's Scottish and because I'd been to Edinburgh and loved it, I moved to Edinburgh <clears throat> and, um, you know, was working full time as a teacher. Right. Uh, which is when I had... Um, I had a, a near-death experience. I had a car crash, a head-on car collision. Uh, he and I went on holiday and another car hit us head-on. Wow. Uh, so I thought after that, oh, wait a minute, you know, it could have been dead. So how do I want to live? Yeah, and that that's just, that's phenomenal. That is <laughs> literally a waking up moment, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So I decided to quit my full-time job and um, be an artist. Oh, love it. I love Idealistic, it. but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I did go and ask a couple of artists, a bit grumpy they were, quite frankly, at the Edinburgh Festival. And they said, oh, well, you know, just get, book a place and put your paintings up. Oh, okay. So actually, that's what I did. First year at the Edinburgh Festival, booked a room yep. in a big old building that had been a bank. And um, very successful, sold lots of paintings. One painting I'd done at the first and fourth, which is this beautiful estuary near Edinburgh. And I'd done it very abstract, you know, lines and things. And this bloke came in, he was in, he was in um, you know, like a biker's uniform with his, <laughs> he said he was a diver, uh, you know, into the estuary. And yep. when he came up out of the water, that was the view he saw. Oh, magical. Just the way he, knew it to be so he bought that painting which is great fantastic <laughs> you were straight so straight out of the job yeah this experience straight yeah. into the next step yeah yeah and then um the next year I had a uh again a sellout exhibition on the Royal Mile which is up uh, just down from the castle uh, in a beautiful building called the Saltire Society and of course you've got 10,000 or more people at the Edinburgh Festival yeah yeah you know, eager to to partake of all the goodies so that was really good and just roughly give us a ballpark where, where what what era are we talking what what years that, are you yeah that's that's the 70s it's, it's yeah um more yeah late late 1970s yeah, yeah. plus uh you know to supplement that um i was also teaching art yeah yeah, yeah. So lovely combination. Okay, so what happened then? How, what were the steps between Edinburgh and Perth, Australia? <laughs> well, because of my my spiritual side of my nature, my wanting to know who am I, what's this, what's this world about, how come I could see things you know differently. Yep. I um I found uh, meditation uh, through a group of people and went to yeah, as a lot of us did back then and found a wonderful guru, quite a controversial one. Uh, of but course. I, I'm, I'm seeing I, the I, themes I, here. <laughs> I just thought, oh, well, this is, I didn't know there were other gurus. I, just, I didn't know anything about it. You know, I'd been up and then left that, and, um, mainly because of the church, not Christ. But anyway, um, so I went to India. And, um, yeah, so uh, while I was in India, uh, I went twice. The first, first time was wonderful. I, had a great time and yeah. came back and um, did an exhibition, not of the paintings then, but of paintings when I got back. And again, they sold fine. And then the second time I went for almost a year, um, that was 1981 by then, and yeah. uh, paint watercolours of India. Yeah. Cool again, because that's my view, you know. And my sister was part of a, um, 
in Nottingham, part of the Festival of India. A lot of Indian people live in Nottingham uh, for that year. So she arranged for me to have an exhibition of these paintings, which again, Wonderful. it was lovely because it was in a building with Indian, Indian women dancing and music. Oh. Yeah, food. surrounded by all that, the music, oh. the colours, the smells yeah. of the food, no doubt. Oh, yeah. how un really wonderful. Yeah. So um, what happened after India? What was the next step from India? We're well, a little bit closer next, to Australia now. <laughs> the next step was meeting a man who I married. Ah, that would uh, do it. <laughs> <laughs> it all sort of changed. And um, he and I decided that we'd move to London uh, to do, he wanted to do this therapist training. He, he'd yep. been in academia for a long while. He was kind of a bit bored with that. He's quite a wild Scottish man. Yeah. Uh, so, um, which Scotsmen often are. Uh, so we moved to London <laughs> and uh, I joined in the therapist my swell. Uh, it was great, you know, it was very it was sort of wonderful group stuff and learning a lot about yourself. Uh, so while in London, so this is what, mid 1980s, uh, I started to have these dreams. Uh, and in the dreams, I was, first dream was a, a, a wizened grandmother with green hair. And I paint her, she was so exciting. And then the next night, another grandmother, I thought, what's going on? I'm getting visited by all these grandmothers. I was painting them at night, because by then I got a, a job um, teaching children with physical handicaps. They were gorgeous. Mm. Um, and then within about a week, I thought, I think this is a tarot pack. And I said to a friend, do you reckon this? And they said, yes, yeah, so you, you're doing a tarot pack. So um, that was the Healing Earth um, book. Oh, so that's when that started. That was, yeah. that was right back then. I don't know why I thought, yes. somehow thought that that was quite a more recent thing. Okay, this is no, part, of, part of the journey. No, so, no, seven years later, I completed all the years in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> you have to persevere sometimes folks <laughs> definitely 100 yeah. percent. so they're all watercolors there's 108 of them yeah and uh, and i'll never forget one day so we had this little flat in Cottesloe here in wa and uh, my husband came home and he said oh he said it's just dawned on you hasn't it you've got to write a book to go with the images i said yeah <laughs> oh, oh no yeah. <laughs> which i did and we sent it off to a few publishers and um the, uh, the fourth publisher took it in the US and sold out 10,500 copies. Wow, congratulations. That's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? That's well, there we are amazing. again. Everybody. Just tell us, how, how did you get then from London? Like, you know, what was the decision that brought you to WA? Oh, yes. Well, um, so we're getting near the end of this therapist training. And um, a, quite a number of friends. You see, Chernobyl had happened uh, and yeah. in Scotland, that's why we moved to London, partly because of the radioactive cloud. Yeah. And quite a number of friends were emigrating to Australia. And we thought, oh, why not emigrate to Australia? You know, <laughs> as you do. As you do. And um, so we tried. Uh, we tried to get my um, husband's daughter, who'd been married before, to come with us, but she wasn't quite ready. And we couldn't quite get enough. You have to have points to emigrate. Yes, that's right. Points back in those days. Points made prizes. No, just below. Hmm. And we thought, oh, what are we going to do? And uh, then uh, David, my husband, um, a friend told him, there was two jobs going that you could apply for. Right. One's in Brisbane uh, with the university and one's in Perth. I mean, we didn't know Brisbane or Perth. There was no internet then. Uh, we looked at photos of them in an encyclopedia. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. I love that. Oh, which one? <laughs> which one? <laughs> yeah. And I said, oh, I like Perth, it looks really nice. And he said, well, I'll, I'll apply for the jobs first. So he did that. And um, he got both jobs. Yeah, so you could change. Anyway, um, and Andy's a bit sort of, what would you call him, uh, pushy. Uh, so uh, yeah, so he said, well, let's go for Perth because you, you like it. So we went for Perth. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that incredible? I love it, what, a, what an incredible journey. <laughs> so, wow, so how long have you been here now then? We arrived uh, in January 1988. Yeah, okay. So a fair time, a fair time. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. What, what a fantastic <laughs> journey. So 
I mean, well, we, we were going to ask you this question, how long have you been doing what you're doing today? But I, it seems like... Oh, yeah. Well, I, I yeah, I thought, well, forever, uh, like from childhood. On childhood. That. In terms of it, you know, combining um, the psychic visionary side, spiritual side with, with the creativity, I'd say about 35 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, you know, a main chunk of your life, really. So... You know, how does that let's 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 talk about the art. We can see a beautiful piece right behind you. Yes. Do you want to just yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Do you want to tell us first off yeah. a little bit about that piece? And then I want to find out how the art integrates in with what you do. Okay. How did that well, this, arrive? This one's called Running with Stars. Yeah. Um, it came actually while I was meditating one day. It came as in I get a vision. Probably a lot of other artists do too. You you, you like get your painting for me almost all yeah. Except that in vision, it's actually alive as well. Whereas, you know, paintings slab something. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite challenging with painting a horse, I imagine. <laughs> it is. Cool. I've, paid, I've painted a lot of horses, so I do know their anatomy. And, um, you know, I have spent a lot of time drawing because I, I believe that's the way, you know, you go and look at something and really see it. Yeah. So, um, in the vision, though, interesting thing, was that the horse to me looked rather ethereal. When I started to draw him, yeah. came out very strong. Yes. I think it's, that's quite a powerful horse. Yes. It's not a dainty sort of- No, 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 absolutely. It's very powerful. It's very yeah. present. It's got huge energy behind it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the tricky bit was, uh, and some of it I painted with it lying on the floor, uh, you know, all these mo movement of stars, and the sort of galactic type of energy that had to be done wet. Yep. You know, just splashing the paint on with a big fat brush, uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed. <laughs> um, and, and uh, you know, uh, it, it just came. So, you know, to me, it's a vision of, of, of well, as you can see, like the freedom that we all, because horses to me are free animals. I yep. mean, they've, they've helped us by, we can get on their backs and ride them, but, you know, they've got this tremendous freedom and beauty about them. Absolutely. So the, all your paintings arrive in vision. So, you know, how, how does it all play in? <laughs> I wish they did. No, they don't. They don't all. Okay. Tell us a little bit more. Well, some are, are sheer experiments. If I'm not doing, you know, like, say, of course, if I'm doing the spirit guides or the animal. Well, the animal shields are an interesting one because I have to arrange, say a person's got five, six, seven animals. And they may be very different animals. You might get a stingray with an elephant. So you've got to arrange them into a, into a painting that's beautiful that, that someone will enjoy having. So that takes, of course, design skill and composition. Right. Yes, okay. And drawing. And drawing. Um, with other paintings, no, Sophie, I, I experiment. I put some colour on and see what will happen. I let it run down the page. I sit back and have a look and think, Hmm. I think I'll add that to it. You know, I mean, I, I do have years of of knowing what colours go with what, and 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 I'm happy to experiment and yeah. sometimes for it to be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a key thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's so easy to avoid the mess and just yeah. go with playing safe. And I, I love mm -hmm. that you embrace the mess by the sounds of it. Yeah, chaos comes to be part of creativity. I think is very much. You know, um, often, I don't know about you, but in a painting, I'll reach this point where I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. And uh, I mean, even after all this time. And um, I call it wrestling with the angel. Yeah. Because <laughs> you feel as if, yeah, it's almost there. It's sort of, and will it or won't it? Or, yes. or is it going to go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, will it or won't it? So how do you, how do you ride out that bit? How do you get it through that, that phase? I think it's a fine balance between trusting the passion in your heart, you know, the, uh, and, the, and the sort of intuition, and also um, uh, patience to sit back for a while and just sort of gaze at it and maybe have a cup of tea. I know you to really get a cup of tea, so have a cup of tea and just sit and look at it and go, hmm. And, and not have any clue, although you might use your mind, your mind might come in and say, what if you put a little bit of pink over there? Yeah, what would happen? Yeah, weighting as well with acrylics, which are better than 
oils in that respect. That's right. Well, so some... much more immediate, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Waiting for it to dry. <laughs> so yeah, it's a sort of combination of all those. Magical. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you know, on this incredible journey that you've had, what, what challenges would you say that you've encountered when you were starting out or just along this fabulous yeah. creative journey that you've had or having? Well, that first, of course, initial leap into the void without yeah. a job, uh, I soon discovered, idealistic me, I thought, oh, I haven't got any money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, money, really, <laughs> finances how to make money, because yeah. um, when, you know, life, of course, uh, what popped up uh, fairly quickly was I met this wonderful man um, who's passed on a marvellous artist who was a watercolour artist and then, uh, yeah, did, uh, it was a Scottish colourist, his name was Hugh, and he said, well, um, you know, I'm, I'm teaching art for um, adults, adult education classes, they are, they are looking for another teacher, how about joining me? So I did that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, initially how I managed sort of thing. Um, so the first challenge you'd say kind of just, you took the leap and it's like, oh my God, okay, where's the income coming from? But that, yeah. that, that yeah. led to the, the teaching job. What yeah. other challenges did you encounter? Not really having a clue as to how to plan. You know, I didn't never thought, well, art is actually a business as well. Yeah. <laughs> clue what to do about that. <laughs> Other than, you know, I'd gone and asked a few artists and uh, yeah, depending on how they felt, you know, they told me and I had some exhibitions, but well, that yeah. didn't really that didn't really tell you about how to run the business then. No, no idea of how to run it as a business, you know, and that would have helped a lot, I think, initially. <laughs> <laughs> as a young a young woman just having a go, you know. Um so how did you, you know, how did you get past that? Those are quite two. Those are probably two major challenges, right? They're probably the <laughs> biggest challenges, not having an income, taking a leap, and then not understanding that actually if I want to do this, how do I, how do, I do this business? How did you overcome that? Well, I'd say two ways um, for income in, in terms of one was, as I said, that teaching. Yeah. Uh, and then later on, I got a part-time job um, in the social work department, yeah. um, which was very lucky to do, I think. Um, and uh, exhibitions. Yeah. Actually, my I mean, of course, you know, you're in Edinburgh, capital of Scotland, which has a lot of galleries, and the galleries were, uh, and my arts, people seem to like it. Uh, so, you know, my art was selling and people liked it. And then I went to Glasgow. I uh, sketched the uh, Scottish ballet and I did a series of watercolors of them. And they also sold at a gallery. Yeah. So I, I think it's, well, I think we mentioned that earlier. Is it listening to what people want as well? We're gonna, yeah, that was going to be the. So the the next the next question was was um, around you know if 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 somebody's listening and they're thinking oh my god okay you know what advice would you give them like if you were starting again what advice would you give them I know that when we we chatted a bit before you had some fantastic tips <laughs> so can you share those with everyone? Yeah, well, uh, well, that was that was on my list. But listening to others uh, without, of course, you know, um, compromising in what you want to create. I mean, I remember my dear mom used to say, and, and funny, haha, uh -huh, just think of it. She used to say, "Why don't you do nice paintings like horses galloping on a beach?" Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, oh, and, and this is when I was a teenager. I think, no, you know, I want to do surrealist art. You know, yeah, I want to do my art. Yeah, yeah. I want to do what, you know, is stirring me. And so, uh, it, you know, uh, luckily, I, I love beauty. And I love creating something that's beautiful for others to look at. Well, I hope it's beautiful. And, uh, you know, that they go, oh, I'd like to have that. But it yeah. seems to me that art should touch people's hearts. As well. Yes, I totally agree. I totally agree. So along with listening, so we were talking about listening for opportunities, listening, yep. you told yep. a story, listening to even just one person asking you something. What was, can you just tell what, what that was about? Yes. Well, yes, uh, that, you know, uh, uh, and that's not, not just in my art, but in what well, is my art, but it's also in my, my courses that I run. Um, but yes, I've, I've learned to pay attention when somebody like 
going back to the women's power shields, I was running courses for women and they said, Jyoti, or I think it was one woman uh, maybe said, could you paint something that reflects back to me my own power? This is something a lot of women certainly used to struggle with is, is being in your own power yeah. without being, you know, overly masculine <clears throat> or, or, you know, aggressive or anything like that. Yep. And I said, oh, yeah, OK. So I started painting reflections for women. Most of the art had a goddess in that, that that woman in particular really tended to resonate with. Again, that went by intuition, not by saying, now, which goddess would you like me to paint? Yeah, absolutely. All the way around, you know. So listening to yeah. what people are saying, oh, I'd love more of that. Yeah, beautiful. Like, like my horses, people love the horses. And um, so... And I love horses, so there you go. It's a win-win sort of thing. Yeah. So that's it. So then, then you go ahead and work with that. Okay. What else? Yes. What other? What other advice you had? I think some P words. I did. P words. Share your yep. P words. My P words are perseverance. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, uh, and I've learned to persevere. I, I didn't at first, but I learned to persevere. Don't give up on something, even if it doesn't work first time around. You know, it might work second time around. I think we talked about a bit about that, didn't we? About it. Mm -hmm. Do you want to share that little story? That's just such a magical story about your workshop. Yeah, I ran uh, when I first uh, came here uh, to WA in 1988. Uh, I got invited by the centre um, to run some workshops on the medicine wheel, the Native American medicine wheel. And I, I painted all the images, and there are a lot of images in the medicine wheel. And you can do sort of meditations and exercises with them. So I ran a course on that. I had about 50 people a night for it. We were all crammed in there. And it was great. And then I decided to run it again, same center, but run it at a different time. Mm. But four people. <laughs> what happened? You know, oh dear. I felt sort of a bit down about it at first, thinking, I, well, obviously I just made the timing wrong. Uh, but out of that group of four was a quiet, big gentleman who invited me to go and, uh, oh no, sorry, who told his parents who ran a center, a beautiful meditation center in the Northern suburbs. His dad came and had a session with me yeah. and his mom, and they became fantastic friends for about 20 years. And so I had, isn't, that, isn't that incredible? Because yeah. sometimes it's really easy to see, oh, I've had this successful workshop, now I've run it again at a different time, and oh, I've only got four. But actually, yeah. presumably you've run it again or something similar. You continued, yep. yeah. Yes. Didn't, oh, yeah. Didn't put so you off. Every time. No, no. I mean, at first I was downhearted, quite frankly. Yeah. But then, you know, picked myself up and thought, well, just give it another go. You, maybe the timing's wrong, you know. And um, I think that's such a big theme, you know, listening to your story. It's like, let's just try that. Give that a go. Keep going. All right. So perseverance. We've got listening perseverance. to perseverance. What yes. other, what other of those advice? Give us another P patience yes <laughs> which is a quality i've had to learn <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> because uh yeah I, I want it now and i want to do absolutely. it absolutely i want it right all now up, all these ideas and yeah so patience yep. keep being patient with yourself and with the growth of your artist um business uh, yeah it, it'll grow yeah yeah like like you can't pull a plant up by its by its leaves. It's not going to grow if you do that. You've got to water it and take care of it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, passion was the other oh, one. Oh yes, you need some passion, and sometimes you don't feel like we're very passionate. But uh, yeah, it's it's there. Passion might be cooking away quietly somewhere, like a pot of soup or something, but it's still there. So, mm. what would you say to somebody who, for example, let's take the ho the horses. Yeah. Is, is wanting desperately to make money from their art. They know they're good at horses. It's not really their passion, but they just, they're like, okay, well, I'll paint some horses. What advice would you give them at that point, do you think? Well, find, you know, if you really want to paint horses and you know you're good at it and you can make some money from it, uh, get passionate about the money for a start. So that's going to help you with, um, with whatever else you want to do. If you want to paint, you know, spiders hanging from closets or something that's fine as well <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, <laughs> great example out of the blue <laughs> well actually I was just thinking of me when I was younger you know my, my surrealist days I would you know, oh I'm, absolutely yeah so um 
you know, say to yourself, well, I'm going to paint this horse really well, you know, get passionate about, I can do this really well. I'm developing my skills because painting a horse is not easy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I would, I would agree. So, so I love that actually, because I, we do obviously come across people who are feeling like, oh, I want to make money. So I'll just do this. And then I think they have that negative emotion attached yes. to it. what you're saying is actually find a reason to get in touch with the passion so that yeah. you know, that project really fly yeah yeah that's what you're going to do and you, you if you like envision the money all the money you're going to make from, from yeah. your, <laughs> and what you can then do with that yeah yes what you can do yeah. with it yeah you can fund yourself for other things can't you love it so yeah you've got your passion it's just where you want to focus it totally totally so we okay. Well, I'm loving loving that. There's some great advice in there. Um, now you mentioned this lovely metaphor, <laughs> the tree metaphor, and I think this is a really good time to talk about that. Can you okay. can you tell us a little bit about about that? Because I really love how you describe that, and I think yeah. that's pertinent for everybody who wants to develop themselves, develop them, develop their art, and also just pull all those things that they're doing perhaps together. So tell yes. us a little bit about that. Well, I, I feel that, um, you know, as an artist, you, you grow like a great tree, not a little skin piece sapling or something. You've got to go really strong, you know, a big oak or what have we got here? A Morton Bay fig or something, you know. <laughs> and the, the first thing is that seed of your passion to be an artist and to create. Yeah. But there it is, you've got your seed. And, you know, like an oak tree has a tiny seed, doesn't it? Just an acorn. But boy, watch out, you know. Um, and uh, so get your seed. And then, first of all, start from the bottom up, you know, because that's what trees do. So grow your roots. And, and the roots are your foundations. So build your foundations. Be uh, earthy and practical about it. You know, like if you, if you need to learn how to paint a horse, learn how to paint a horse. If you need to be able to put paint on well go and learn how to put colors together go and learn how to have your canvases you know in the right shape etc etc build your foundations first your, your earthiness as it were put down your roots and of course the main root being that root of your deep commitment the passion that you're you're going to make a go of this you know this is your life you're going to do it and, and then you build it you know your trunk grows naturally out of that and your trunk is is that part of you that's that's every day that's just every day the trunk is building its its bark and its and its system and everything this is what you're doing you're building your systems uh you know if you need to learn <laughs> well you know like uh, how to make it a good business then you do that as well don't you you know but yeah it, it's a, it, a trunk on a big tree you don't see straight away it might be a little bit flimsy thing but you know if it's got good roots it'll stay there and then finally, you know, your branches, you're branching out, you're maybe experimenting, trying different things, different avenues, all your branches are growing more directions and, and the leaves. And of course, then there's the fruit of that, your fruit of your labors, as they say, you know, and, and uh, you know, as a great tree, you could shelter others under your, under your camp. Oh, I like that. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's my metaphor. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. I think it's, you know, a lot again of listening to you. It's 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 the patience thing, but it's it's also actually your inner self, that your inner strength. I am the artist, and I will try this. I'll have a go at that. I'm not just going to give up because something didn't happen. No. This is the passion. This is the life. This is where this is what I'm doing. And you've mm -hmm. taken chances and you've gone with things. And I think a lot of people will resonate with that because I think we sit in this world of. Oh, you know, will it look good on Instagram? Well, you know, it's irrelevant. You grew your business yes. like I do did before. Yes. Thank goodness before that yes. world existed. Yes. It's not about that, actually. It's really about what you're doing and your message and in your mm. case, my case too as well, how we pull all these threads together. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And make that work. Yeah. Um, that's just super. Now you've mentioned of course that you're teaching and you've mentioned this this deck. So I think that people might be a little bit intrigued. So can you <laughs> tell us a little about what all the things that you offer at the moment? Like what do you offer at the moment? G give us a little bit of a, a product spray. What have you got? Okay. This is my canopy. Um, canopy. <laughs> <laughs> canopy. Um, 
what do I offer? Well, uh, there is my Healing Earth book and deck. You can buy that. Uh, you can buy it from my website. I have a beautiful new website designed by Vicky Mahir. <laughs> Gorgeous. You must go and have a look. We'll put below. So we've got, okay, okay so we've got, yeah. Um, yeah, what else have we got? What uh, makes your, do. your canopy? I offer you readings with the Healing Earth book and deck. I've been doing these readings for 30 odd years. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and you can get a reading on your life direction or any particular thing that you're concerned about that you need focus with. Uh, I am clairvoyant, which does not necessarily mean that I can tell you exactly what's going to happen in the future because that's up to you. But I can point you in good directions to get where you want to go. And clairvoyant means being able to see clearly. Um, I also have another deck called the Tija deck. I did all the 33 designs for that. That is the breath work and movement and energy alignment. And uh, I did all these images to show you exactly what energies you're aligning in your physical body and your energy field. And that's done with uh, Deb Schubert from Colorado, a uh, dear friend of mine. Uh, I'm going to be in the Chasm exhibition coming up in October. So we've got paintings as part of your canopy, yes. obviously, original yes. artwork. Yeah, I'm also going to um, have, uh, I think, early next year, uh, an artist studio. Um, I, yeah, I think that would be a really great thing. <laughs> basically, anybody who wants to know, wants to find out more about that, I'm going to put all the links to how you can follow um, Jyoti below this video. Right. Um, and finally, how do you manage all of this together. So this is going to be the key question yeah. everybody wants to know. <laughs> You're doing all these different things; they seem to weave beautifully together. But yeah. let's just give us a practical breakdown. Like, okay, this morning you've got up and you're doing this interview with me, but that's not a normal day, I presume. No, so no. <laughs> just through an average week, how do you manage all the things together? I get my diary, yeah, um, and I uh, have a plan. Um, mm -hmm. I'm seeing clients, I make sure I book them in so that I've got, because I'm not getting any younger, I, I have time to recover from doing one hour session with them. Yeah. Um, I um, have time for writing because I like to write and I'm writing a memoir just now, um, which is about 30,000 pages in, the uh, words in. Uh, so that's good. Well, and, yeah, we're all relieved it's not 30,000 pages. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Ah! <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, yes, I might slot out a, a, a day to paint. Yep. Um, and I paint fast, so that probably helps. I don't know. Um, but I get exhausted by the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you you find you find that when you get in the studio and you paint, it's just it's it's you're all in. You don't do kind of a half an hour here, yeah. half an hour yeah. there. You're all no. In. Yeah. No, yep. no, not me really. Too. No, I could do that with uh, you know popping up things on Instagram and Facebook. Yep. Thanks, to Sophie, suggesting a few wonderful things that I do. So with Instagram and Facebook, I can you know do a little video or yeah or a reel of things or that sort of thing. And you know, they can they don't sort of really. I mean, of course, they take time, but not not like painting. You know, you've got to really get in there and say I'm not answering any calls. I'm just doing this. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So you switch everything off. Your painting. You're all in. All the all the tech. All the yeah. I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah. No yeah. disruptions. No. So, no. you know, I've got quite good at, at planning. Um, yeah. At seeing ahead where I want to go. So far, uh, mornings uh, I wake up very early, five six o'clock. Uh, I usually like to sit and meditate. Um, and I also write, I've been writing a journal for years and that sort of reflects back to me where I'm up to. Yeah. Um, I draw in a journal as well. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's about it really. That's my day. I do take days off and love to see good friends, go and have lunch and go out. You've got a lovely balance as well. I mean, it sounds like you're, you are living the dream life there, Josie. Feels like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've enjoyed myself. <laughs> And it's all just come together really, really nicely. So I suppose if you could, if you could, I'm throwing this question out at you now. So <laughs> okay. if, if you could leave our listeners with, I don't know, maybe one gem. So they're, they're sitting there and they're thinking, oh my goodness me, you know, I'm just at the beginning of my journey. Yes. Um, what's the one thing you want to tell them? Well, I think first and foremost, um, follow your love, do what you love. Mm -hmm. 
in this time of the world. You know, don't get into fear. It's a waste of time. Yeah. If, yeah. if you dig yourself out quick, you know, go and paint a nice picture or dance or do something creative. Get out of fear. Um, yes. What else? Uh, use both. Use both your, your love, you know, from your heart and use your mind, use your intelligence. You know, if you need to focus and think, that is what the mind is very good at. Yes. Just things through. So it's a nice balance. I call it like two wings. You know, you've got the wings of wing of love and you've got the wing of, of wisdom. You know, and wisdom is just simply experiences that you've learned from. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, use yeah. both of those. You've got two wings. You could fly. <laughs> oh, do you know what? That, <laughs> that's amazing, isn't it? I th- you're such an inspiration. I could, I could talk to you for hours and hours and I... I feel like we're going to need to do a revisit and another interview, I think, down the road because you, I feel like you have so much to share with us, you know, in terms of just, just like really going with it, stepping into who you are as a creative and then just going on that journey, like you say, not allowing fear to get in, but just like that moment comes in, you shake it off, you do something that changes your emotional state, gets yourself back in, in the, the way that you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so where can fi- people find out more about you? Give us your website one more time. I'm going to put everything down below. Oh, great, because I know I forgot to mention that, um, talk about perseverance. Um, you know, I've been creating this online course for a few years. Yes. <laughs> called The Mystery of the Tarot, How to Use the Tarot to Deeply Enrich Your Life. It is very beautiful, I, even though I say so myself, but I have had a lot of wonderful support with creating this course, and I'm about to start launching it. <gasps> Okay. Watch out for that. So can people get on a waiting list for that? Yes, they can. Yes. Okay. So we're going to put all of the links, your website, the waiting list for the course, where they can purchase the card decks, where they can watch your art, all of it, and your social media links as well, because you're you're very good on the socials as well, I have to say. I like it. I I rather enjoy it. And I love seeing what everybody else is doing. My goodness me, there's some young artists are doing fabulous stuff. I think, oh, wow, you know, that's... (laughs) I'm it's liking inspiration that. moments isn't it yeah so, so yeah so my website is is um www.jotimckeehq.com uh, awesome thank you listen thank you so much for the time today i'm so so thrilled to have oh, spoken with you and um i wish you every success and i'm sure we'll catch up locally <laughs> oh great i'd love that and, um don't forget to follow Jyoti on on the on the old socials as well. Like I say, we'll put, put all the links below. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for watching. And thank you. see us again thank on the next Sophie. video. Take care, Jyoti. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye everybody. <laughs>